Hello, everybody. I'm your host, Eric Bird, here at StopCircleNow.com. And today, I have to talk about this because you know this is the No Guru Zone, and I just couldn't believe what I was watching. And this is something that's not usual for the channel, but Edward Snowden did something to Sunil Tolsiani and the Private Investment Club that I've never seen. It was savage. So I have to share this with you. And welcome to Fosse Optics. Check. Stop circling now, gear. Check. And please like, subscribe, and click the bell below so you get the latest updates. Now, let's get to it. Are we live? Okay, awesome. Ladies and gentlemen, um, let's give warm welcome to Edward Snowden. Let's give him a hand. Let's see that. I want to see you guys. Yeah. <laughs> um, Edward, uh, he is a former CIA officer and he worked with the NSA, risked everything to expose the US government's uh, illegal system of mass surveillance in 2013. Uh, Ed is a president of uh, Freedom of Press. Ed, welcome to the Private Investment Club. Thank you for being here. Volume, um, Ed, we didn't hear you. Try again, please. Give me a second, please. We're gonna try again one more time. Let me know, team, when. Uh... Okay, can you hear? Okay, Ed, say something, please. Uh, yeah, if if you guys on the Zoom call can hear me, can you just wave a hand? Actually, I can, we can hear you. We can hear you, actually. Okay. okay, we can hear you. Ed, welcome once again. Uh, thank you, everyone in the audience. Yes, you're you're awesome. Um, I have some questions uh, from our team and people and all that stuff. Let me ask you a few of them, please. Uh, first one, of course, everybody talks about the movie uh, Snowden. Um, tell me a bit more about uh, your story. I mean, how accurate was that movie? <laughs> Let's start with that. <laughs> well, so the movie, of course, is a drug station. But I think uh, what it actually talks about the core facts uh, that really matter to the public, what was happening. Law and the sacrifices that are necessary to bring that to the public to, to make people understand what's happening. Um, that's all true. Uh, and this is, you know, you, you asked about my uh, my background. Uh, originally, uh, this uh, invitation came through my speaker's bureau, uh, and they told me it was a wealth summit. Uh, there's going to be a wealthy audience, um, and so uh, this is a kind of an unusual audience. For me. Yes, um, I've spoken once or twice. Uh, at uh, like you know a bank and things like that, but but normally th that's not the kind of background. So I was excited, good to have this conversation. Uh, you know, I, I wrote a whole uh, speech on this idea of you know wealth. Um, how does it work for us, right? Uh, how does it work against us? Uh, and what is the issue that we see today with this big unequal society? Um, what is the distinction? between wealth as we know it and we interact with it today in a wealthy society. Right. Um, which is what we really want. And, you know, the more I thought about it, the more I realized part of the problem is society as we know it has really frayed. Um, the internet, the divisions among uh, international community, among our uh, even familial ties, 
uh, the internet, the things we read, we pick our own communities. Right? And when we do that at a large enough scale, uh, what happens is we, we stop hearing the things that we need to hear in order to understand what the truth really is, as opposed to simply what we want to believe. Um, and this gets us to that idea of whistleblowing and ethics, which was uh, what I wanted to tie this into. Yes. Uh, you asked, you know, what I'm, what I'm known for. In, in, in 2013, um, I contacted uh, a number of different journalists. Uh, and the thing that people remember is from the documentary film, Citizen Four, as opposed to the Oliver Stone film. I said, uh, my identity was not known to these journalists yet. I was writing through encrypted communications, you know, uh, because we were all concerned the NSA would arrest us all before we got the truth out. And I said, for now, know that every border you cross, every purchase you make, every call you dial, every cell phone tower you pass, friend you keep, article you write, site you visit, subject line you type, and packet you route is in the hands of a system whose reach is unlimited and whose safeguards are not. I went on to tell the journalists uh, that I could prove that this was true because I worked for the government and I had access to classified documents uh, that would prove these things were real. Um, but doing that uh, meant that I was basically burning my life to the ground. It was an enormous sacrifice. And I didn't want to do that. Uh, once I realized what was going on, I, I looked around, I talked to my colleagues, I said, do you think this is right? And no, they all thought it was wrong, but they thought there wasn't anything they could do about it. And realistically, I thought there wasn't anything I could do about it for the longest time. But I thought somebody else would, because we have a system, right? We have a society, we have all of these links uh, that are supposed to safeguard against these comprehensive failures. And if I just waited, somebody would come forward. Uh, there would be some easy solution, some magic button, you know, some some promise out there from someone uh, that there was an easy way and, and things would get better, right? And I wouldn't have to do anything. But the reality is life isn't fair. Um, and sometimes the person that we're waiting for is us. Uh, there was no boss, there was no supervisor, there was no colleague, there was no congressman, there was no president uh, who made this better, who's going to make this better. And the only way things could get better is if we looked around at everything that was going on and go, you know, can I, can I trust this? What can I trust? Where's the proof? Um, and so I contacted journalists and so I provided this and then the rest is really history. Uh, I am a wanted man. I can't return back home. I was living in Hawaii making an incredible amount of money for doing very little work with the woman that I, I loved. Uh, and I, I had to give all of that up. And so, you know, again, in the context of this, um, this idea of whistleblowing, it's really remarkable to me uh, that people go through the day and they become so familiar with this sense of wrongdoing, with seeing things like I saw in the office and hoping somebody else would do something about it or turning a blind eye and going, it's not my problem. These are not my people. It doesn't impact me. You know, I can get by with it. That they just let things happen. Um, but I don't want to do that anymore. And so it's really astonishing to me that uh, just before I connected, I had uh, a friend reach out to me and tell me they heard things on this conference uh, like is someone saying that they couldn't uh, afford this, and, you know, the host uh, saying, find a way to afford it. We need to defeat the virus if I can't afford it. In a time of inequality, uh, we can't accept that. People are struggling, and there are things that we can't ask them to do. Uh, and to say that that's okay, to turn a blind eye, to go on with that, I think is wrong. And so I have to ask, you know, <laughs> it's very unusual that you booked me for this conference because, you know, as a whistleblower, it's my obligation, I think personally and professionally, to ask, uh, is this you? Yes. Because I think that it is. Yes. And I think that the things that I've heard tonight make me very uncomfortable with this event. I think it makes me very uncomfortable and everyone involved with this should really question uh, is this the kind of association that they want to have? Uh, are you going to be able to deliver on the promises that you're making them? I sure hope to God that you will. But my advice to everyone on this call tonight, everyone looking at this, is look up uh, what you're getting involved in. If you spent money, uh, are you sure that you want to spend it or do you want to charge it back? Um, 
And by God, think hard about if you want to continue this. Because for me, ladies and gentlemen, for tonight, I don't. Thank you so much, and good night. Wow. Wow. Let's uh, let's take like a few minutes break, and I'll write. I'll be right back, and um, we'll go over this. I'll go over the whole thing with you guys. This is totally unexpected, and I'm so sorry that this has ha has happened. A lot of times, um, same thing, same things like where somebody writes something, and you know these are these are the same stuff that a lot of people do, where there's a headline where people look at, and 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 I'm I'm so sorry to see that he has chosen to do that. So I just need five minutes and I'll be right back. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> 